Welcome back to chapter 6 of Things Fall Apart. As you can tell from my shirt, I never left. Let's get into it. The whole village turned out on the elo, men, women, and children. They stood round in a huge circle, leaving the center of the playground free. The elders and grandees of the village sat on their own stools brought there by their young sons or slaves. Okonkwo was among them. All others stood except those who came early enough to secure places on the few stands which had been built by placing smooth logs on forked pillars. And you may have noticed that they mentioned slaves here, and it wasn't just Europeans or Americans that had slaves. Africans used other Africans as slaves as well. The wrestlers were not there yet, and the drummers held the field. They too sat just in front of the huge circle of spectators facing the elders. Behind them was the big and ancient silk cotton tree, which was sacred. Spirits of good children lived in that, tre in that tree waiting to be born. On ordinary days, young women who desired children came to sit under its shade. There were seven drums, and they were arranged according to their sizes in a long wooden basket. Three men beat them with sticks, working feverishly from one drum to another. They were possessed by the spirit of the drums. The young men who kept order on these occasions dashed about, consulting among themselves and with the leaders of the two wrestling teams, who were still outside the circle, behind the crowd. Once in a while, two young men carrying palm fronds ran round the circle and kept the crowd back by beating the ground in front of them, or, if they were stubborn, their legs and feet. At last, the two teams danced into the circle, and the crowd roared and clapped. The drums rose to a frenzy. The people surged forward. The young men who kept order flew around, waving their palm fronds. Old men nodded to the beat of the drums, and remembered the days when they wrestled to its intoxicating rhythm. The contest began with boys of fifteen or sixteen. There were only three such boys in each team. They were not the real wrestlers. They merely set the scene. Within a short time, the first two bouts were over. But the third created a big sensation, even among the elders who did not usually show their excitement so openly. It was as quick as the other two, perhaps even quicker, but very few people had ever seen that kind of wrestling before. As soon as the two boys closed in, one of them did something which no one could describe because it had been quick as a flash, and the other boy was flat on his back. The crowd roared and clapped, and for a while drowned the frenzied drums. Okonkwo sprang to his feet and quickly sat down again. Three young men from the victorious boys' team ran forward, carried him shoulder-high, and danced through the cheering crowd. Everybody soon knew who the boy was. His name was Maduka, the son of Obierica. And remember, Obierica is Okonkwo's best friend. The drummers stopped for a brief rest before the real matches. Their bodies shone with sweat, and they took up fans and began to fan themselves. They also drank water from small pots and ate cola nuts. They became ordinary human beings again, talking and laughing amongst themselves and with others who stood near them. The air, which had been stretched taut with excitement, relaxed again. It was as if water had been poured on the tightened skin of a drum. Many people looked around, perhaps for the first time, and saw those who stood or sat next to them. I did not know it was you, Akwefi said to the woman who had stood shoulder to shoulder with her since the beginning of the matches. I do not blame you, said the woman. I have never seen such a large crowd of people. Is it true that Okonkwo nearly killed you with his gun? It is true indeed, my dear friend. I cannot yet find a mouth with which to tell the story. Your chi is very much awake, my friend. And how is my daughter Azinma? Now, this is uh, Akwefi's friend, who you're going to find out is, her name is Chielo, and she's talking to her, so don't be confused. It's Chielo that's calling Azinma my daughter, and that's because everyone's really fond of Azinma, and um, just like you may have a friend whose mom kind of takes care of you like you're one of their own, that's the situation that's happening here. She has been very well for some time now. Perhaps she has come to stay. I think she has. How old is she now? She is about ten years old. I think she will stay. They usually stay if they do not die before the age of six. I pray she stays, said Aquafi with a heavy sigh. And that will be explained later on in the book. 
Um, but the fear was that Azinma may have died as a child. Um, and so we're very fortunate that she has not, and they're just said as much. The woman with whom she talked was called Shielo. She was the priestess of Agbala, the oracle of the hills and caves. In ordinary life, Chielo was a widow with two children. She was very friendly with Aquafi, and they shared a common shed in the market. She was particularly fond of Aquafi's only daughter, Zinma, whom she called my daughter. Quite often, she bought bean cakes and gave Aquafi some to take home to Azinma. Anyone seeing Chielo in ordinary life would hardly believe she was the same person who prophesied when the spirit of Agbala was upon her. The drummers took up their sticks, and the air shivered and grew tense like a tightened bow. The two teams were ranged, facing each other across the clear space. A young man from one team danced across the center to the other side, and pointed at whomever he wanted to fight. They danced back to the center together, and then closed in. There were twelve men on each side, and the challenge went from one side to the other. Two judges walked around the wrestlers, and when they thought they were equally matched, stopped them. Five matches ended in this way, but the really exciting moments were when a man was thrown. The huge voice of the crowd then rose to the sky, and in every direction. It was even heard in the surrounding villages. The last match was between the leaders of the teams. They were among the best wrestlers at all the nine villages. The crowd wondered who would throw the other this year. Some said Akafo was the better man. Others said he was not the equal of Ikezui. Last year neither of them had thrown the other, even though the judges had allowed the contest to go on longer than was the custom. They had the same style, and one saw the other's plans beforehand. It might happen again this year. Dusk was already approaching when their contest began. The drums went mad and the crowds also. They surged forward as the two young men danced into the circle. The palm fronds were helpless in keeping them back. Ikezue held out his right hand. Akafo seized it and they closed in. It was a fierce contest. Ikezue strove to dig in his right heel behind Akafo so as to pitch him backward in the clever Ege style. Or AJ style. But the one knew what the other was thinking. The crowd had surrounded and swallowed up the drummers, whose frantic rhythm was no longer a mere disembodied sound, but the very heartbeat of the people. The wrestlers were now almost still in each other's grip. The muscles on their arms and their thighs and on their backs stood out and twitched. It looked like an equal match. The two judges were already moving forward to separate them, when a Kezue, now desperate, went down quickly on one knee in an attempt to fling his man backward over his head. It was a sad miscalculation. Quick as the lightning of a Madiora, Akafo raised his right leg and swung it over his rival's head. The crowd burst into a thunderous roar. Akafo was swept off his feet by his supporters and carried home shoulder high. They sang his praise, and the young women clapped their hands. Who will wrestle for our village? Akafo will wrestle for our village. Has he thrown a hundred men? He has thrown four hundred men. Has he thrown a hundred cats? He has thrown four hundred cats. Then send him word to fight for us. That's it for chapter six. We'll get into chapter seven next time. It's a little bit longer, so um, just be prepared for that.